Hello, I am Dr. Anil Guri. I am a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Hamilton Fertility Centre in London. Today I am going to talk to you about a very slightly different topic. It is about what is the association between the FSH dose and the AMH level and the quality of oocytes in an antagonist cycle. Now I'll tell you what generally happens. Often IVF is followed on very fixed protocols. You follow IVF by, by having a fixed regime of AMH of this or age of this, stimulation at this level or so many drugs. And I want you to come to this understanding where I have tried to move away from fixed protocols to understanding the philosophy and the physiology of stimulation. And when I mean, when I mean the philosophy of stimulation, I mean the ability to question why certain stimulations work and some don't. Also, if you just put those three words ahead of any act of science that you do, your understanding of science becomes huge. It takes over the complete understanding of why a certain treatment will work or not work. So, at present, a belief is that Women with a low AMH need to be given a higher dose. Women with a high AMH need to be given a lower dose. Now, we do know that very high FSH stimulation does impair follicular number and function. Now, this paper was testing a hypothesis. The hypothesis were that high doses of FSH has a detrimental effect on oocyte quantity and quality and patients with low and normal AMH. And in fact, a higher dose may be required in women with very high AMH to break the inhibitory force or the inhibitory role of AMH. Again, I'll go back to it. And those who come for this course, which I do, will realize that I will harp again and again into understanding how follicular recruitment takes place. Without understanding how follicular recruitment takes place, I doubt if you'll be able to fine-tune your stimulation protocols. It's very easy to stimulate. It is not a firm science if you learn to stimulate without understanding the dynamics. You become a stimulating doctor and you do not become a reproductive medicine specialist. And I am I the entire role of all these lectures is to increase in you the desire to ask the question why. So what did they do? 2013 to 2016, 994 patients in a single institution, AMH according to nanogram per ml, three groups, AMH less than 1.8 nanogram per ml, AMH 1.8 to 4.2 and AMH greater than 4.2. The third group is PCO. When you look at, have a look at the picture here. And when you have a look at the picture, you realize that there is in group one and group two, as your FSH doses went higher, from 225, your number of mature oocytes, M2 oocytes, steadily decreased. Number of oocytes obtained as you went higher also decreased and number of usable embryos also decreased. Let's look at group number three. AMH of high AMH, the lower your dose, the less 
oocytes you got and the less embryos you got. But yes, it did work better in a lot of other cases. As you increase the dose, especially in those cases in which the FSH threshold was very high, and in those cases, you realize that the number of oocytes of embryos steadily increased. And that's a very interesting subject. I'm not, and again, I'm asking you not to go on to fix protocols. Understand in which cases a um, low dose would work better, in which cases a high dose would work better. And my teaching is to get you to understand how that ovary functions, to keep asking and reasoning why and which protocol will work the best. Here again, if you see in normal responders and in poor responders in women with a low reserve, hitting the ovary very hard just does not work. It seems to in fact lower the success rate and the concept that by pushing the ovary very hard, you'll get very good quality of oocytes is a wrong concept. It's a concept which is very much based on a very strict and a single pointed policy. It is a policy which is non-negotiable and that is what often puts patients at harm. And once again, if you have a look at the triangle which I had shown, I jokingly call it the goody triangle, you'll realize that your stimulation pathways can be devised around it. That your stimulation can tell you which that in low responders, why in many of them a low dose stimulation would work and why in certain high image patients a high stimulation would work. And it's again all about how you break the threshold. How you break the threshold in some poor responders where the number of follicles is much smaller. It's a smaller follicle range. More follicles at the higher level of stimulation, which means near a 10 millimeter mark. Both these require a much shorter jump of FSH and lower doses work. Alternatively, we'll have a look at what happens with dense polycystic ovaries. Everything clumped up. Your force towards pushing these follicles up, absolutely up, giving it the trajectory up there, is going to be harder. And that's what I want you to understand. Again, I want you to understand the logic of the length of stimulation versus the height of stimulation, the dose. Ovulation induction is lengthening the length, keeping a small height. Ovarian stimulation varies in between what you're treating. If you're treating a poor responder, that stimulation varies in many cases where a mild stimulation works. Based on this paper, what you, could what you can conclude is in low AMH, it looks that if you give a very high dose, you're more likely to get less oocytes. While in high image, you'll have to decide what if 150 does not work? And then in those cases, giving a dose of 300 may change the system. Again, this is a short talk which looks towards improving ovarian stimulation. I hope you've enjoyed it. If it is, please share the talk. Thank you very much.